Welcome to Lee Sports Village for Manchester United versus Bristol City on another busy Sunday in the Barclays Women's Super League. With Arsenal dropping points on Friday evening at Stamford Bridge, Manchester United can reduce the gap on third to six points if they pick up victory against basement side Bristol City. City have had two weeks to recover from the brutal 7-3 defeat at the hands of Brighton. Six points off of West Ham. It is a huge task for the visitors to preserve their WSL status. Lauren Lovin Smith suggested this week that perhaps the pressure is off of her underdog side and hopes that something can be made of that to their advantage starting today. We can see pitch side a presentation being made to Hayley Ladd, who recently made her 100th appearance for the football club. Following that, the shirt for Katie Zellum, the Manchester United captain, 150 appearances notched up for the club. That presentation will be made imminently. The stadium is upstanding for a very special moment. Katie Zellum has played a huge part in Manchester United's success. 150 appearances. The presentation is made and now the focus returns on to this big clash against Bristol City. Let's take a look at the team news now. And after last weekend's comprehensive victory away at Brighton, United make a much wanted return to home comforts and stick with the same 11 who knocked the Seagulls out of the FA Cup. Nikita Paris leading the line could become the second WSL player to score two plus goals in three consecutive home games this season. The only player to have done that so far is Chelsea's Lauren James. Three changes for Bristol City. They have been suffering with some injuries. There is a change in goal after conceding seven two weeks ago. Shea Yanez replaces Olivia Clark. Carrie Jones suffered an injury in training this week, which required a scan. She and Lisa Evans come out of the side. Jamie Lee Napier and Shania Hales come in, the latter making her first league start of the season. So Manchester United, the home team, playing in red shirts, black shorts and black socks. Bristol City, who will get us underway with the yellow shirts, green shorts, the yellow socks with the green bit of trim at the top of the knee. It's been a long 14 days for Bristol City after that humbling loss. And they are ready to get us underway, but the referee is not. We will, of course, take a moment as the players take a knee. A reminder that there is no room for racism in football and in wider society as well. The whistle blows again, and we will get started. This time, the long ball played forward by the visitors, headed away by Letizia. In the starting 11, manages to play a neat ball to Lee Napier. The, the starters combining well down that left hand side, but Jade Riviere deals with the danger and laces the ball out to Turner. Now Mallard for United.
Gondel getting her first few touches of the football, plays it back to Letizia. This has been a really solid, consistent back four for Manchester United this season in the league and in the FA Cup as well. The FA Cup becoming a very important competition indeed for United. They will face Chelsea on the 14th of April at home, which will be significant having that home advantage. They've played a lot of games on the road in recent weeks. Letizia plays a long ball forward. It's a decent one for Lucia Garcia to run on to her first advance for Manchester United. Plenty of City bodies back. The penalty area camped with a sea of yellow and green. Zellum picks out Rivier, who's caught. It's a very, very early yellow card. It was a late one by Jamie Lee Napier. Less than two minutes on the clock. And the visitors have to be alert to the danger that's going to be posed from this early set piece for Manchester United. Katie Zellum, the set piece specialist, just to set in her options. A City former two player wall. Zellum with her right, right arm lifted aloft. A signal that this is going to be a routine from the training ground. Right footed delivery comes in from the captain, gathered well by Shea Yanez. A change in goal for Bristol City this afternoon. Yanez signed for the club back in January from San Diego Wave. Has played football in England, spent three years at London City Lionesses competing in the championship. The last time these two teams met, it was a goalless opening half of football. Bristol City's defensive shape and concentration, making it a frustrating opening 45 minutes for United, who had to be patient. And first team coach Charlotte Healy in the build up to this week's encounter highlighted that United, again, perhaps today, will need to be patient. They created over 20 chances against Bristol City last time, converted two in the second half. United will be hoping that their attacking tools have been sharpened. They were certainly in clinical mood against Brighton, a 4-0 thumping victory in the quarterfinal of the FA Cup. And I want to score some early goals to give this home crowd something to cheer about as well. They have a throw in halfway in the Bristol City half. Blundell will take. Finds Toon. He plays it back to Blundell. Turner, square to Letizia. All United's outfield players now camped in the Bristol City half. Letizia. Wins the foot race against Amelie Testrup, whose birthday it is today. She'll be looking to get into double digits in terms of goals and to mark the special occasion as well. But it's United who are on the attack. As Lisa Nelson looks to play a ball down the right, expecting another galloping run from Garcia. It doesn't come off for United on this occasion. We've Played over five minutes. It's United nil, Bristol City nil.
United beginning to build a nice passing rhythm. They like to build from the back. And with Letizia's fantastic passing range, they can go direct as well and work around the scraps, which is what Blundell is trying to do down that left-hand side. Links up with Toon. Nice bit work from the United number seven. Eventually, Bristol City concede the throw in. Blundell looks to take quickly, jogs back and exchanges passes with Zellum. Eventually back again to Letizia. Blundell has options around her, picks out Mallard. Square to Riviere. Switches up feet. Looks to get the shot away. It's blocked by Hales. And some of Manchester United's taller players with aerial threat were lurking in and around the area. Mallard being one of them. She's come out now to link up play once again. Riviere to Garcia. It's a heavy first touch. Napier's there and Napier needs to be a little bit careful with the challenges now. That was all fair and square. That discipline is going to be so important. And you'd expect with a player who's got that experience, that shouldn't be a problem at all. But something for Manchester United to try and exploit. Tester up, holding up play well. Plays it back to the skipper, Connolly, the Republic. Public of Ireland International had a superb game despite her team losing the last time these two teams met. Her leadership at the heart of Bristol City's defence. She signed from Brighton. It's been a shrewd acquisition. United in on goal here. The shot comes in and there's the opener. Manchester United take the lead and it's a nice run and it's an even nicer clinical finish from Nisa Nilsson. The midfielder broke forwards. No Bristol City defender went to Connect, went to apply pressure until Amy Rogers came sliding in and that was too late. Norsen had picked her spot. And she gives Manchester United an early lead here. Exactly what manager Mark Skinner would have wanted. Manchester United won. Bristol City nil. Nelson's third WSL goal of the season. And the goal, a reflection of the early pressure and dominance Manchester United have enjoyed in this WSL encounter. There's another game kicking off at 12 o'clock. It's a game that Bristol City supporters will have an eye on as well between Liverpool and West Ham. The Hammers have broken away in recent weeks and Bristol City haven't been able to make the most of playing teams in and around them. Some heavy defeats in the last four games. I mentioned the 7-3 loss to Brighton, a 5-2 loss to Leicester and a 2-1 loss to the Hammers. Means that the visitors are languishing bottom of the WSL. The championship football next season looks likely unless they can pull off something miraculous. Lauren Smith said her young squad is still learning. They haven't been helped by injuries. Naomi Lazel, Satara, Murray, Rachel Furness and Abby Harrison have all been missing in recent weeks. Harrison making a much wanted return to the bench today. Can the visitors summon a response? Lee Napier trying to advance into the 
United half. She's stopped on her travels. United have possession once again. Hales, that's a nice ball forwards. And some space now for Bristol City to attack. Good recovery run and positioning from Millie Turner. Fionn Morgan was the Bristol City player who had a little bit of room to navigate into an opening in on goal. And City can continue to apply some pressure here. They have a free kick. A chance to send bodies forward into the Manchester United box. And when you come to visit Manchester United, set pieces are absolutely pivotal, essential that the Robins make the most of this one. Can they test Mary Earps in the United goal? Connolly, header away, commanding as ever from Turner. And the free kick is followed by a throw in. Ella Powell takes. And a corner. The first of the game for Bristol City. And a positive phase of play for Lauren Smith's side. She took the free kick just moments ago and Connolly will take this corner as well. The delivery comes in. Headed towards goal. Mallard's there and clears for Manchester United. No counter-attack on though. As Powers positioned well, plays it out to the right-hand side. Morgan sprints forward, gets the better of Zellum, gets the cross in as well. It's a decent one. And now it's United and the counter-attack is very much on. Nikita Paris sprinting alongside Garcia, who holds it up well, turns. That's a nice ball for Toon as well. Good defending from Connolly just to present the check on Toon there. Paris, United's top goal scorer, plays it back to Riviere. United now have more bodies forward and Bristol City able to compose their shape behind the ball as well. And they snifle out that particular threat from United. Good control and pass from Hales, the Jamaican international. And another ball looks to be played forward first time to test drop and Riviere making an important intervention. First quarter down and it is advantage to Manchester United. 1-0 up courtesy of a well-taken goal from midfielder Lisa Nolsund. You can see Mark Skinner dressed in all black on the edge of his technical area, relaying some instructions to his team. Riviere cuts out the ball that was searching for Napier. I feel like the young right back is just getting better and better in a Manchester United shirt. 
challenge by Hales. Manages to play the ball back to Earps. Good to see A. Square to Turner. Zellum on the edge of the circle. Finds tune. Garcia now for Manchester United. Finds tune again. United trying to thread a pass through the Bristol City defence. It doesn't come off, but with Letizia now, they might try again. Building and building. Looking for a second. The foul given and United have a free kick. We might see the game's second yellow card or perhaps a firm talking to instead. It's Brooke Aspin who's had that warning. An academy graduate who signed a four year, year deal with Chelsea back in the summer of last year and then came back on loan to the club. Was forced off of injury the last time these two teams met. Back ready to battle and keep this team in the Women's Super League. Bristol City find themselves a goal down with another dangerous set piece to have to defend. Referee won't allow the free kick to be taken though until she's had a word. She's seen something going on she's not quite happy with. Sends the players back to resume. And play will shortly resume with Katie Zellum standing over the ball. Can she orchestrate another opening for United? Headed clear at the first time of asking. That header is a, a poor one. And it gives United possession back again. Let's see CA over on that left-hand side now. Linking things together for Mallard and Toon. Mallard giving chase, but that will go out for a goal kick. Good work from Aspin. Bristol City finding it hard to get out of their own half with 20 minutes on the clock. They're trailing a goal down here. United enjoying plenty on the ball. A little bit wasteful there, although Nikita Paris lifts her hand aloft. That was the kind of ball she was looking for, the kind of service. She's been kept relatively quiet so far this afternoon. Riviera appeals for a free kick. Referee not interested. Bristol City win the ball. It's played forward. Two tests drop. Turner comes over to cover.
Crystal City in search of an equaliser. Tried to cast something open down the right-hand side. But Turner and Blundell have it covered. And United have a throw over by the corner flag. Rivier who cuts inside. This is the aim. To Garcia gets it back again. And you might have seen on Manchester United's club channels this week a fascinating contest, a fascinating exercise where the players were asked to try and put some mini footballs from one container into another as quickly as possible. And the club showed all of the players attempting, picking up each individual ball and chucking them into the box beside them, apart from one. And it's the player on the ball now, Letizia. Shows what an intelligent and smart thinker she is. She simply lifted the box and poured all of the balls into the other container, therefore completing the task the quickest. Showing sometimes that some simple thinking can be the best kind. And that's a simple pass over to the left-hand side where Toon has some space. Plays it back to Letizia, the winner of that challenge. And what a bright career ahead of her, Maya Letizia has. The disappointment of not being in Serena Wiegmann's World Cup squad. But this season, I have to say, Every time I've seen her, both for club and country, she's been so, so solid. And she can be deployed in a number of roles as well. Letizia, a smart, smart footballer indeed. Very well-rounded. Now, after getting their goal, Manchester United haven't really put their foot on the gas. Can they double their advantage? Can they make all of this possession and passing count for something more? Need to move the ball apart with perhaps a little bit more pace. Bristol City's shape behind the ball is making it hard for them to break down. So the ball over the top will be employed. Finds Garcia. Linking up with the goal scorer. Gets the ball back again. Riviere. And that will be gathered by Yanaz. No clean sheets in the WSL so far this season. Bristol City have conceded the most amount in the division. Something that their boss is so keen to atone for. There have been games this season well, they've shown how solid they can be, but in recent weeks, as I mentioned, the losses have come with heavy score lines as well. And the games aren't getting any easier. Seven games left this season, many including against the top six, the likes of Spurs, Arsenal, Liverpool, Man City and Chelsea to come as well, of course, as this contest against Manchester United, which is a difficult one. It's one that they're trailing, but just the one goal. It's a slender advantage. Rivier manages to find Paris. It's a really neat ball through. out the back by City. Connolly. Ricochets off the boot of Paris. United pressing that well. Mm. 
and the visitors have suffered on the road this season. One win in 19 away games. Eight draws, 10 losses. They've conceded in each of those matches. 63 goals, including today. It is the longest run without a clean sheet in WSL history. And when you concede goals in the manner that Bristol City have this season, unfortunately, relegation looms. Points this afternoon desperately needed. Some chances need to be created as well. So far, just the one goal, the difference. And the game between Liverpool and West Ham, which is live over on FA Player as well, is goalless too. If Liverpool can do Bristol City a favour this afternoon, and if City can try and claw our way back into this game, it might make that contest down the bottom of the division a more competitive one. Although for Manchester United supporters, Liverpool getting points today is not what they want. Tied on points currently. And of course, the men's team host Liverpool in the Emirates FA Cup quarterfinals later on. Can both Manchester United teams make it through to the semi-finals? We've got a pause in play here. Bristol City goalkeeper is down and we do tend to see this sometimes in the women's game. Um, while we have perhaps this tactical pause, let's take a look at the goal that is the difference so far this afternoon. It came in the opening 10 minutes, a really nice run by Lisa Nelson. Left-footed shot, drilled into the bottom right corner. The goalkeeper will be a bit frustrated given her positioning. But it is a goal that Manchester United have deserved for their dominant Sorry, start. The it's a sunny afternoon in Manchester. Perfect conditions to play good football. And Manchester United have. They just, by their high standards, probably haven't tested Yanez as much as they would like. And we can see Zellum and Garcia in conversation as are the rest of the team with the Manchester United coaching staff. We have got so much going on on FA Player today. You can also keep an eye on how Liverpool are getting on against West Ham United here on FA Player. That goal, that game rather, is still nil-nil. Later on this afternoon, fresh from their FA Cup exploits, Tottenham Hotspur host Leicester City. And we also have championship action for you at two o'clock. Southampton hosting Reading. The championship promotion race is looking so exciting. So many teams in for a chance of competing in the WSL next season. We have played half an hour here. It is Manchester United 1, Bristol City 0. half an hour mark prompting this pause for the goalkeeper to receive some treatment and for both sets of players to make their way over to the technical areas we can see I think it's Connolly the skipper who's gone over to Linez and they're just exchanging words perhaps some of those instructions being relayed back how can Bristol City find a way to come back into this contest at Lee Sports Village in the sunshine. <laughs> Manchester United can reduce the points gap between them and Arsenal in third. Arsenal losing to Chelsea on Friday night. 
could go from nine to six points if things stay how they are. There's going to be so many twists and turns between now and the end of the season. Some mouth-watering games to look forward to as well. Up next for United is a trip to the Etihad to take on Manchester City. What consequence that could have on who wins the WSL title. Garcia now cutting the ball back. It's bobbling around in the area. It's an outstretched lunge. The goal scorer jumps over. Back to Riviere. Toon looks to play the ball over the top. It'll be gathered with ease by Yanez. That's poor distribution from the visiting keeper. The throw will be taken quickly by United. He will want to add some goals to their tally between now and the half-time break. United advancing up the pitch through Riviere who receives a nudge on the back, hits the deck. And United have another set piece. She's so good at inducing those fouls, Riviere, when she does come forward for Manchester United. Manchester United need to be more clinical with these types of chances. This is Katie Zenneman territory. It's also Ella Toon territory as well. Chia Garcia wants in on the conversations about how United can make the most of this. Toon. Tries to find Garcia, but... Bristol City are alert to that danger. Comes to nothing for United. They still have possession. There's some space opening up over on that left-hand side. If they can play it quickly enough, Blundell. Had Mallard over on that left, plays it back to Letizia instead. And you just feel that perhaps there's an opportunity for Manchester United to stretch the game a little bit more. Quite a lot is coming through centrally where it's very, very congested. Credit to Bristol City for making it that way. You feel perhaps United could open this game up and touch more. Harris and Toon combining to apply pressure. Hales does really well. Hales. Finds the pass and a long ball forward will be chested down controlled and passed to Leticia who gets it back from Zellum. Oops. Probably count on two hands the number of touches she's had so far this afternoon. That is how dominant United have been. Good ball forward for Mallard to run onto. Has Blundell in support. Zellum a ball into the box, looking for the head of Paris. Cleared eventually, and now Hales can drive forward, sprint forward, and tries to pick out Testrup, but Turner and Letizia have such a good partnership, such a good understanding. And they'll be employed once again to try and get something started for United. Ball played forward for Garcia. But again, we'll credit the positioning of Yanez. 
to deal with that effectively for Bristol City. And despite trailing a goal to nil, I imagine Lauren Smith is quietly satisfied with the way her team have gone about their business so far this afternoon, particularly from a defensive point of view. It is so, so difficult when you concede seven goals on the back of games where the, the manner in which you have been shipping in goals is unrecognisable to the way that Bristol City started the season. And it's a club, of course, that Smith has been involved with now for over a decade. She began as an under-14s coach back in 2010, became a full-time employee in 2014, a technical director looking after the whole player pathway. She left to become Wales's assistant coach before returning in 2021 to help Bristol City get to this division, to get to the top of the pyramid. And she was so desperately hoped that she can somehow, in the next seven games, keep them in the division. An equaliser right now would be a morale boost before half time. The travelling side are well supported on the road. Supporters coach full of fans sticking by their team. As well as those who are of course keeping an eye from afar. Seeing this Bristol City team working really, really hard to try and break down United's defence. They kept a clean sheet against Brighton in the FA Cup. Mary Epps has five in the WSL so far. demanding for the ball but it was too slow from Riviere Toon will have the ball now though freely glides across the pitch before playing it out to the left hand side Zellum back to the Canadian international and back to Zellum and that's perhaps highlighting a little frustration here from Manchester United of course there is the emphasis on being patient but somehow I feel that it's not quite quick and clicking how it wants to be from a offensive point of view United trying to find a direct route to passage Turner has her cross blocked. <laughs> Corner for United. Harris in a foot race up against Powell. Gets the final touch. Five minutes left of this first half. United 1 0 up. Can they make it two from this corner? Delivery comes in. Nodded away, but falls to Paris, Powell gets there, now City can attack, Toon tracking back for United, this is a fantastic move from Bristol City and it results in a corner just like that, from one end of the pitch to the other, brilliant counter-attack in play, you see you showcase there the pace that this young Bristol City team have at their disposal. 
Can they punish Manchester United further for not taking their own chances down the other end? With a corner routine that is going to be conducted by their captain. Connolly. And the header towards goal from Aspen. Aspen scored the winner for Bristol City. And the last away win at West Ham back in November. It's a date that's easy to remember, the 5th of November. Although it feels like a very, very long time ago if you're a Bristol City supporter. That was the one win in 19 that I was speaking about earlier. But the longer it stays 1-0, and particularly if it stays 1-0 to the break, Lauren Smith will be telling her side, and quite rightly so, that you can still be in this contest. They've won a few free kicks in interesting areas. They've won a couple of corners as well. The opportunities in open play have been reduced, but the Robins can make one of those count. They can find a way back into this game. It's Mallard who's going to need some treatment. There is a goal in the game. It's also live on FA Player right now between Liverpool and West Ham. It's the hosts who have gone 1-0 up. Fantastic news if you are a Bristol City supporter. Less so if you're a Manchester United supporter. And there is Lauren Smith just quickly looking, glancing at her watch. As I mentioned at the very start, she spoke this week in her pre-game press conference about this idea of pressure and the fact that her side are underdogs and are always constantly labelled that way in WSL encounters and wanting to almost use that to take the pressure off of her side so that they could express themselves and almost saying we have nothing to lose it it can't get any harder it can't get any more difficult she's had injury issues as well so far this season and it's been a far more competitive contest than many might have suspected after that score line last time out two weeks to work in the training ground a little bit of rest as well It'll be a far more positive half-time team talk. And she'll be pleased with the way that her team have gone about executing this game plan, even though they are trailing one goal to nil. We are going to have four minutes of additional time. That's just been announced to the supporters here at the Lee Sports Village. Toon has the ball on the halfway line. Plays it down the left flank where Mallard, who's just received treatment, can sprint onto the end of it. This is a good position for Manchester United. Bodies are forward, options are there. Toon on the edge of the area. Zellum. Out to Blundell. It's a slice clearance from Connolly. It bounces awkwardly for Powell. And Bristol City concede a cheap corner late on in additional time. It's played quickly by United. comes to nothing it should be cleared and you see on your screen there confirmation of that four minutes we played just over a minute of it appeals for offside no flag goes up Riviere there's plenty of time to pick what she wants to do the ball and she plays it to the goal scorer one goal the difference so far. <laughs> it's 
Letizia trying to find Garcia. Read well by Bristol City. Can they summon one last attack before the half-time whistle blows? Rogers tries to play out to the left-hand side. Throw in. Power will collect and take her time to a certain degree. Just waiting for some options. She side foots it up the pitch. Turner is there. United playing it along the back line in their own half. Blondell almost commanding that Turner comes forward a little bit. Time is ticking for Manchester United if they want to get another goal in this half. They have to show a bit of late intent. United have had 71% possession. Two shots, which is exactly the same as Bristol City. The one shot on target is the difference. Both teams have had the same amount of corners as well. So I think there might be an air of frustration, perhaps, if you're Mark Skinner, that you've had all this dominance at home against a team bottom of the league and you haven't scored more goals. We can see Katie Zellum there almost showcasing a bit of that frustration. The demands are high here at Manchester United. But again, credit where it is due. Brist Bristol City have played well in this opening half as Ellerton gets back on her feet. Looks to be in a degree of discomfort. We've played the four minutes. I suspect we'll have another 30 seconds so or more. Well, not even that. On that cue, the referee blows the whistle for half time. At the break, it is Manchester United 1, Bristol City 0. Now, it hasn't been an opening 45 minutes full of chances due to some good defending from the visitors. Let's take a look back at the goal. That is the difference that came early on in the fixture. I think nine minutes were on the clock and Lisa Nelson picked up the ball, advanced forward with very little pressure at all, was able to get the shot away drilling it low into the bottom right-hand corner. It was a bright start for Manchester United, but truthfully, it's a start that they haven't really built upon, really gotten going in this game. Bristol City have turned up well organized with a clear game plan, and they are very much in this contest. Join us for the second half here on FA Player at halftime in the Barclays Women's Super League. It is Manchester United 1, Bristol City 0. Okay, I'm Amy Rogers. I'm Arlie Testro. Hey, I'm Taylor Hines. I'm Mackenzie Arnold. I'm Missy Wilkins, and this is Away Day Teammates. My away game essentials are my PlayStation. I've got one of the Poga things, um, so I bring that with me. It's got a TV on so I can play on the coach and stuff. iPad. My, my, my iPad for Netflix, yeah. like stuff like that. Yeah. Recently, my book I've been into reading now, so like, yeah, any book that I'm reading at the minute. I like having my AirPods, I can listen to music. Me too. I'd say like coffee, but yeah, I went to like essentials. AirPods. My boots, my shin pads. I mean, obviously my boots. Um, game day sports bra, grip socks. My car max. Yeah, maybe just all my toiletries. I like to feel fresh all the time on my perfumes. I think hairbrush. I've got quite frizzy hair at the front. A lot of people like to have a pillow for the long journey. Yeah. So you can sleep a bit. Nothing special. <laughs> People might not believe me, but on the coach, I like sitting on my own, playing on my PlayStation and stuff. Um, I do get up and have a wander and socialise with the rest of the girls, but on the coach, I like my own space. I like sitting next on my own. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I sit around the same, like, the same group of people, like Yana, Lorzy, um, 
And but yeah, I like sitting on my own, but I don't mind who I sit opposite with because we've got tables. So like as long as I've got the two seats to myself, then I'm happy. Ah, uh, Kirsty Smith. Yeah, Amy. <laughs> We've been on one-away trips so far, trip, but yeah. I'll, I mean, I'll keep it that way. Oh, okay. I'm satisfied. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And I'd say both. Jazz and Fernie? Yeah. They like a card game. Yeah. We've already been enlisted into their card group. So. Yeah. Probably Viv and Hawa, always. Um, I think me or me and Enderby, I think we're always up to something. Stick little things in people's <laughs> nose when they're, <laughs> when they're sleeping and stuff, or something like that. She'll, she'll come up with something. I don't know what it will be, but she'll make it up. Always late. No one's really late. I would say the last to get ready most of the time would be Shannon Cook. Let me think, do you know what? No, we're actually all pretty on time. It was on time? Yeah. We've only had a few bus journeys, though, at the minute. So ask me again <laughs> a few months, in a few months. Okay, well, I don't think anyone has been late, but I will say Brooke is very forgetful, I have come to learn. Yeah. So I feel like if there, anyone would be late, it would be Brooke just because she like forgot something or lost her phone again. Yeah, yeah, lost her keys, something like that. Probably Bo. Missy Bo, she'll just talk the whole time and sometimes I just need to like, when I'm reading, if I'm going to read my book, I can't sit next to her because she'll be talking to me. Princess Vivian Hawa, the whole time. Jamie Lee. Or Abby, maybe. Or Abby, yeah. yeah. The Scots. To be fair, a lot of a few players. I'd say Neve sleeps a bit. Uh, Risa or Hono. Um, Neve Fahi, she's always sleeping. Um, she's not lazy, but she likes her own space and sleeping on the bus. Not quite sure yet, but Emily Simon does fall asleep. Does she? Yeah, she can okay. sleep anywhere. I say even I have a little nap, but yeah, a few people do. To be fair. My best pre-game snack would probably be either three wheat bix or wheat bix, whatever you want to call them, and or sorry, butter on toast. I'm not gonna lie. I like to have banana. I feel like I've been starting that now. Like having banana, give me a bit of energy and stuff. But I always have the same pre-match meal as well: poached egg on toast, always. I love porridge before a game or like open oats. I think that's the best thing. I don't really have a snack, but my pre-match meal is beans on toast, and if it's a night game, I'll have tuna pasta. I like making sure of getting a lot of carbs pre-game. Post-game snack. A wrap, maybe. I'm, I'm a sucker for a milkshake, some sort of chocolate milkshake or something, but yeah, I'm not really, it uh, doesn't phase me, to be honest. Post-game, I don't know, something that also fills you up, but maybe is a bit less bland than like chicken and rice or something. Treat yourself a little bit. Yeah, treat me. Probably like a pizza or something. Our s &C puts food on sometimes after games and we always moan. Something grubby. So it'd have, probably have to be Macca's. The coffee trip, probably, myself. We're not allowed to go to Costa no more because Kerry only likes Starbucks. I mean, I feel like we would like to. Yeah, we're but, both coffee drinkers. Yeah, but, but we're not um, very, like, we don't know much about the area Probably just yet, yeah, yeah. yeah. so we're getting a lot of recommendations, but I feel like in a couple months' yeah, time, we've got it. We've got it, yeah. Is my dinner. ring, ring, ring. And I'm, I'm just good. like, just a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> Right, we've got five songs here that you have chosen. A okay, little yeah. bit of a soundtrack to your life that we're going to go through. Uh -huh. We're going to start off with Kalani, Cardi B. Oh, this is a banger. Ring. Are you a big Cardi B, Kalani fan in general? Yeah, 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 definitely for sure. I think so. This song I always play before a game. Oh, okay. So that's kind of like my hype song. Like, I mean, it's not the most hype. No, part, it's, but not, it's not. But it's, it's chill. Chilled. Yeah, okay. Like it, it calms me. It's chilled. I'm yeah, relaxed. Yeah. But every game, without since it came out, without yeah. fail, like imagine. So do you have a specific game playlist that you like focus on that doesn't cross paths with your life playlist? Probably, I would say there's a couple of songs here and there. Yeah. That is the top, top, top most important. Yeah. Like if I'm like rushing, I haven't listened to it yet. Like I'll sit there in the changing room <laughs> with my headphones in. So it's always become like a superstition now. Yeah, you have probably. to listen to that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if Carla's speaking, I'm like one sec. <laughs> just have it in the background, Cardi B rapping. <laughs> Talk me through this. Love, one. love, love. I just think it reminds me of my mum. I don't yeah. know why. It's yeah. just like obviously their playlist back in the day. Those, yeah. That that old school R and B vibes. I think just living in that era would be kind of kind of cool. Are you an old school R and B fan? I am. Big yeah. old school R and B fan. And then if we go into slightly more new school R and B, yeah. got a bit of Post Malone. So. 
Did you watch this film? I did, I yeah. Well, the, the Into the Spider Verse. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As, soon, as soon as I like put it on straight away, just noticed the playlist. It's so good. It's, so, it, it's unbelievable. It's so, like the so songs good. that were playing, yeah. I think, when, when you were like, playlist to my life, I'm yeah. thinking. That's probably my intro to my life. Okay. Why, why would you say start. that? Just like with how it comes in, it's upbeat, it's chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that's that's me. This one. This one's definitely okay. on there. This is a this personal <laughs> favourite of mine, so I'm so glad. Because I don't think anyone else has chose Childish Gambino, actually. No I think way. you're the first one. I could put so many of his on there. Love him. This song, I don't... So, not that I forgot, but I remembered <laughs> it when I was in Australia watching the Women's World Cup. Yeah, yeah. And just being in Australia, Sunset, sunrise, blue skies, you got the beach. Yeah. This song banging. Yeah. What more could you want? And then back to our old school RB. Yeah. An absolute that classic. Boy is mine. So, fun fact. Yeah. That was top of the charts on my birth when okay. I was born. So, so there's a bit of a story behind it as yeah. well. So then I was like, do I put that at the start of my life? Because that's yeah. the day I was born. Yeah. And it was number one yeah. in the UK. That's a good one to have. Because so, other people, like when you look at like the one, like what was number one when they were born, and it was like some terrible song. Yeah. And you're like, oh. I know. That's a good one. And when that's it's this one, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> their boy is. I'm like, if easy. you were to. Uh, do a duet of that at karaoke. What, mm -hmm. Who of your teammates are you choosing to do the other part? Do you know what? I'd pick Rachel Daly. She Her is a karaoke is, yeah. guru. Yeah. I think she wouldn't disappoint. Do you think she's got that in her locker? Uh, oh. <laughs> I feel like we need 10 out of 10 effort yeah, and she must provide the 10 out of 10 effort. Yeah. So that's all I'm going to rate her on. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not a big like yeah, Angie fan yeah, herself, we'll, but yeah, she put the effort Yeah, in. we'll see if we, we do it one day. And then out of these songs, You've just won a game. Which of those five are you playing to celebrate, get everyone going, have a good oh, time? Oh, probably Post Malone. Okay. Chilled. Yeah. I'd probably play Ring. I'm lying. I'd probably play Kalani. <laughs> Kalani. Yeah, I'm lying. And everyone's like this again. Man. Yeah, so yeah. Come on I mean, that's why I'm not allowed on the speed. <laughs> that's probably why I'm not allowed. I have like three songs. To see us out, could you give yeah. us one line of Ring Ring? I feel like you got the vocals on. Oh. <laughs> Little one, little one. Ring, ring, ring. <laughs> there you go. That's all we need. That's all we need. Perfect. Thank you for giving us your choices. Right, no problem. We're going to add these to my playlist now. Yeah, sick. Thank you. Rachel Furness, and this is my ultimate five side. So, in goal, I'd say Mary Earps, play the part Redden world's best keeper right now, so Mary. I think she was fantastic at the World Cup and showed why she's one of the best goalkeepers around. So Mary... I mean, I guess I need a defender in there too, if I don't concede. Um, current centre-half, I'd say Millie Bright. Fantastic leader for Chelsea. Um, really, really tough to play against. Really physical, great on the ball. Zero goals conceded. Happy days. Kim Little, a midfielder that I've always looked up to and thought has been fantastic for Arsenal over the years. Um, a really kind of unsung hero, but one of the hardest players um, I've played against. So Kim Little, 100% in there. I need to score goals, so I'll say Beth Mead. Played with her at Sunderland back when she was just normal old Beth. Knew she was a kind of superstar back then, so yeah, definitely, definitely Beth in there. Viv, um, Miramar, I'd have to put in there. Her and Beth link up well. Yeah, fantastic player. I mean, a goat of the WSL, scores a lot of goals.
Welcome back to Lee Sports Village, where Manchester United find themselves a goal to the good against Bristol City. After a dominant 45 minutes on the ball, United have found clear-cut chances limited by the visitors who are battling for their WSL status. They were punished for stepping off of United midfielder Lisa Nielsen, whose smart finish is the difference as we get ready for the second half and what a second half it could prove to be. Mark Skinner's side want to capitalise on Arsenal's dropped points, whilst Bristol City aim to reduce the six-point gap West Ham have managed to create over that 12th place in the Barclays WSL. Neither manager looks to have made any changes at the break, and it is United who are going to get us underway for the second period, courtesy of their number seven, an England Lioness, Ella Toon. Manchester United named an unchanged 11 from the side who dispatched so ruthlessly of Brighton in the FA Cup. That ruthless streak hasn't quite been on display so far this afternoon, but if you had joined us for the first half, important to know the credit that we give to Bristol City, who were beaten so heavily by that same Brighton team two weeks ago. It's been a long two weeks for the visitors. Three changes for them, including one in goal. Shea Yanaz, Jamie Lee Napier and Shania Hales all coming into the side. Perhaps already in this opening 60 seconds of action, we're seeing Manchester United moving the ball far, far quicker. That's neat, intricate play, and it leads to a corner. A fast start to the second half is exactly what Mark Skinner would have demanded. United dominated possession, but still registered the same amount of shots as their WSL counterparts who had far, far less of the ball. The corner comes in. It's a good ball as well. It was appreciated by the crowd here. Mallard applying some pressure. Ella Powell doing well there and the visitors can reset. Happy to play it out from the back. Connolly drops the shoulder, clears up the space to play it out to the left-hand side. First time ball forward. Maya Letizia should deal with, plays it back to Mary Earps. Receives it back from her goalkeeper. Manchester United lost their first other WSL meeting with Bristol City. Back in January 2020, Ebony Salmon scoring the winner in that game. None of the current Bristol City squad have scored against Manchester United. Since then, United have gone on to win three league games in a row. And they have an advantage here. Mallard's efforts appreciated by the home crowd with a warm round of applause, chasing on to try and keep the ball in play. She isn't able to do so. when these two teams met earlier in the season. Back in November, it was nil-nil at half-time. There was an element of patience required from Manchester United then, and there might need to be so again this afternoon. This two-week break seems to have done the visitors the world of good in terms of getting back on the training ground, getting a bit of rest time and getting back to the basics. And doing them well to contain this United side level on points with Liverpool, who are playing West Ham.
Turner charging forwards. Has Blundell in support. Toon makes space with her run. Also offering the cutback if Mallard wanted it. Instead, it gets played to Zellum. Now to Letizia. Better from United. Quicker from United. Is there an end delivery for United? Zellum cut out. And the seconds falls at the feet of Napier. There is plenty of action in the Women's Super League today. Liverpool currently 1-0 up against West Ham. Man City, meanwhile, who have travelled to Brighton, are 2-0 up after 40 minutes after their disappointing FA Cup exit last week. Manchester United's opponents next week seem to have recovered well. What a tantalising Manchester derby that could be. It's next Saturday at the Etihad. Garcia now for United looks to find her teammate, but the offside flag is up. United seem to have gone up a gear or two for the second half. Long ball over the top. Morgan giving chase. Morgan winning the race. Getting the cross in as well. And it falls to Hales who hits the bar. And it ricochets back to the Bristol City forward. And was unable to get back on her feet to make the most of it. Fantastic work. Down that right-hand side. Earps had the angle covered, but still the shot was able to hit the post. Hales looks to have been winded. Requires a moment or two. And will require some treatment eventually. City exposing a slight weak spot there. I saw it in glimpses in the opening half, the pace that Bristol City have. It's a brilliant run down the right-hand side. It's been a tough week as well, I should add, for Bristol City. When you're bottom of the league, it does feel sometimes like nothing is going quite right for you. And they actually lost a session of training this week due to illness affecting the camp. It meant less time on the training ground to prepare. But one thing you can say about this opening 50-plus minutes of football is Bristol City have looked well prepared. And that will be the end of Hales' afternoon. And the first substitution of the day as well coming for the visitors. Confirmation on your screen that Mari Ward comes on. plays forward and Riviere charges towards Nikita Paris now a player United will be keen to get involved in this game more delivery comes in headed away Mallard will get the seconds plays the ball to Blundell who gives chase fantastic defending by Brooke Aspin been really Impressed with just the slight details of her defensive display. They look like small, finer details, but they're things that she does really, really well. Another young player in this Bristol City team who has a bright future ahead. And although this has been a difficult campaign, it is one that 
these players as individuals will learn lots from. And they're on the attack again. The cross comes in, it's a really good one. Test drop, marked well by Turner. The ball came in and aiming towards that six yard line area where poachers and centre forwards love to receive the ball. minutes into the second period. Mallard with a fantastic cross into the area after Ella Toon's run. United feel like they're in the ascendancy somewhat now as another delivery comes in searching for Nikita Paris. It's given the crowd here something to cheer about, something to really get behind. They're appreciating the intensity of play. Paris with the opportunity to double United's advantage. Ward takes the tumble, the substitute. Wins her team a free kick. I think we might see some more changes this time it looks as if Manchester United will make an offensive change. Jace being prepared, you can perhaps see her on your screen by that halfway line. Connolly, the captain, out to her left. Receives the ball back and gains a few yards up the pitch. Ward marked tightly by Riviere. Ball goes out of play and just wondered whether we would see the Manchester United substitution. We are. It's Jace. Coming on to the field of play. And it is a switch for Melvin Mallard. United's number nine replaced by their number 23. A popular player for Manchester United. United will be hoping that her devastating pace and creativity could unlock further opportunities. As this game is on a bit of a knife edge, even though United have enjoyed so much more of the ball. 1-0, it's a dangerous, dangerous scoreline. Liverpool women now 2-0 up against West Ham, which you can also watch on FA Player. No second half goals here yet at the Lee Sports Village. Harris to Toon, who looks to set Jace free for her first advance forward. Brilliant defending, what a battle there. Jamie Lee Napier doing really well <laughs> for Bristol City. That's not the best clearance though, and Toon will look to elaborate upon it. 
Aspin, calm as you like, back to Yanez. And the clearance is nodded down by Turner towards Zellum. He plays it back to Letizier. Side-footed, cut out by Connolly. But still United, Prow, Jace. Heading towards the byline. Looks to produce something of service to her teammates. But again, the defending is solid. And Yanez gathers. An hour played, Manchester United one, Bristol City nil. United still clinging to the aspiration of breaking into the top three. Not mathematically impossible yet, with Arsenal dropping points as well at the weekend. United sitting fourth in the division, Bristol City at the bottom in 12th. City come into this game on the back of some heavy losses, both in terms of the scoreline, but psychologically as well against teams in and around them. Last time out, it was a 7-3 loss to Brighton. Before that, 5-2 defeat to Leicester. And a far narrower, but potentially consequential loss to West Ham, 2-1. And all the games upcoming, against teams in the top six as well. It's a tough task for Lauren Smith and her team, but this hour of football has shown that they are going to give it their absolute all. And if they can play in this organised, resilient, unified way, don't quite rule them out. Not yet. They worked so hard to get into this division. And there's lots of discourse, of course, around the gap between the WSL and the championship. And the championship's looking really, really exciting. You can watch the game between Southampton and Reading at 2 o'clock. And let me remind you of what is coming up on FA Player. I mentioned that you can watch the game between Liverpool and West Ham. Liverpool 2-0 up at the moment. And at 2pm, you can see how Spurs get on against Leicester City after making history last week in the FA Cup. Can they pick up some more WSL points? And then that championship game, Southampton versus Reading, is a 2 p.m. kickoff. So preparations underway there. Here, meanwhile, it is one goal. Scored in the ninth minute, which feels a very long time ago now, but that is still the difference. Bristol City can perhaps be motivated even more by the fact that only Aston Villa and Leicester City have dropped more points from a winning position than Manchester United. These are all the things that you have to consider when you're a team at the bottom fighting for your life. Uh, morale can perhaps feel low, can be quite draining. But this is a spirited and energising display so far from Bristol City. And it's Manchester United's job to extinguish that. And I just get the feeling they're going to need more than one goal to do that. And we are going to see some more changes for Bristol City. Ella Powell coming off. Adds Harrison coming on. Soleil struck. And Abby Harrison, the other change.
sun is shining here in Manchester. Feels like spring is in the air and can Manchester United find a spring in their step? Can they find another goal to make this game slightly more comfortable? Hooked back by Zellum, nodded by Riviere. Down so she can control and pass it back to Letizia. Erps now scanning. Plays the short pass to Letizia. There's a forward advance by Manchester United, but every time they try, they come unstuck. City working so, so hard. Up next for them is a trip to Spurs next Sunday. Another massive weekend in the Barclays Women's Super League. Could this be a massive moment now for Bristol City? They have the ball. Harrison places a lovely ball out to the left-hand side. Ward. Has Napier for support. Good footwork. Brilliant pass. And it results in a corner. Napier and Harrison combine in the pair. Play together at Hibs. In a season where Napier won player of the season and then got a fantastic move to Chelsea and the two combine in really well there. Could be a big moment, this. Connolly. In her corner, headed away by Toon. Only so far as Harrison. Another whipped in delivery. It's going to be another corner. First time delivery forces Hannah Blundell to concede the set piece. Can Bristol City make this one count? Can they summon an equaliser? again by United and by Ella Toon. The TCA races out and this is a fantastic opportunity now for the centre-back who's sprinting towards goal. Maya Letizia has got her body open up. Can she find the finish? Cuts it back to Ella Toon. It's a neat back heel. Ella Toon trying to find the key to Paris. The attack is still alive. And the shot wide from Toon. It was an unconventional opportunity. That intervention there, really, really important. And Connolly chasing in on Toon. Her shot wildly wide.
Hannah Blundell has possession for United. Plays it out to Zellum. Zellum to Nelson, who hooks it over, searching for Nikita Paris. Aspen's there. Strong aerial challenge. Chase, surrounded by Bristol City players. Defending so well in their tiny pockets and units as well as a collective. We've got 20 minutes left of this encounter. And Brooke Aspen immediately apologising to her goalkeeper there. One of her poorer touches of the afternoon. Doesn't come to anything for the home team. Dundell on the halfway line, checks back, finds Zellum, who is the conductor more often or not for Manchester United. Not on this occasion, though. Gives away possession. Bristol City have the ball. Some space to advance into the United half, and the ball just trickles out of play. Maya Letizia with a hopeful punt up front towards her attacking colleagues. And now the ball played forward and immediately she has to revert to some defending. <laughs> Apologetic hand coming up. Garcia. With a poor pass. It's kind of summing it up those sequences now for Manchester United not applying the quality we know that this talented squad has at their disposal and I think I've emphasized enough how well Bristol City have played today but partly this is down to United not executing their passes properly although Garcia now with a curling effort and that is quality that is what Manchester United need Nice layoff, smart one from Blundell. The right footed curl and whip. If that had gone into the bottom right hand corner, that would have been a goal that this game might need, really, to boost it up another notch. Certainly a goal that Mark Skinner will need. I can't imagine it feels very comfortable in that dugout right now. And perhaps thoughts are mulling over what changes could be made to United. They named an unchanged starting 11. They've introduced Jace. There are plenty of talented players on the bench should United want to make some changes. They do like to score goals in the final stages of games. They've scored nine and conceded four in the final 10 minutes of WSL encounters so far this season. And we know that they have Rachel Williams on the bench as well, who, despite finding her cameos limited in terms of minutes on the pitch, when she is on the pitch, my goodness, what an impact she makes. She rescued United when they faced Southampton in the FA Cup recently. Can she help put this game to bed as United struggle again to test Yanez in the Bristol City goal? And just like that, we will see the change. Nikita Paris will make way. And Rachel Williams, nine goals to her name so far in the WSL, will come on.
No goals for Nikita Paris this afternoon. She had scored in her last four appearances against Bristol City, which was her joint longest scoring streak versus any opponent in the WSL, but not to be today, and you have to credit the, the back line for that. A different kind of centre forward to come up against now. As we approach the final 15 minutes, United 1, Bristol City 0. Blundell, good work from the left back. Has energy to burn. Such fitness and stamina getting up and down that wing as Zellum creates the chance. The header from United is a looped one and seen by Yanez. He has Williams lurking around. And when you consider this Bristol City side conceded seven last time out, just three changes made. Manager Lauren Smith doesn't have the squad at her disposal to make wholesale changes, and she made that very clear in her pre-match press conference. The improvement is vast. Pause here as Jade Riviere receives treatment. You see some conversations going on between Turner, Blundell, and Toon. <laughs> While we have this little pause, shall we look at the only goal of the game so far? It happened in the opening 10 minutes. Manchester United taking an early advantage. You can see. Lisa Nelson here picking up possession and driving forward. No Bristol City defender making contact or even attempting to engage until it was far too late. The midfielder had already picked her spot in the bottom right-hand corner. And that goal might well prove to be the means in which Manchester United still three points this afternoon and reduce the gap on Arsenal from nine to six points. Manchester United have a free kick. Letizia will take. Zellum finds Toon. The cross blocked. But Toon still offering, still making runs. Lays the ball back. There's some space opens up for Blundell to deliver. It's a good delivery as well. It's absolutely destined for Millie Turner until, well, Brooke Aspin had something to say about that. Important header from the Bristol centre back. It was a lovely delivery. Now, United have a corner. And the visitors have some more defending to do. Zellen with the delivery towards that inside post, which is covered by two Bristol City players, eventually cleared only so far as Blundell. Has Earps in support. And let's not forget that Bristol City did hit the post in this game. Other than that, though, 
Mary Epps' gloves have been untouched. She has been a spectator for long durations. United have commanded possession, that's for sure. When it comes to shots and corners, the stats are far, far closer as Rachel Williams looks to try and capitalise on. I wouldn't call it miscommunication there, but Connolly was certainly hoping that her goalkeeper would come out and command that situation perhaps a little sooner. We are into the final 10 minutes. And the home team have the upper hand. A goal to the good. When you consider how much United have enjoyed playing against recently promoted opposition in the WSL. Their nine previous games, they've won by an aggregate score of 27-1. And their biggest win against a newly promoted side was their most recent. And that was in January last year against Liverpool. They won 6-0. And you can see here with Bristol City, the lessons that have been learned by some bruising encounters in this division, the highest tier of the women's game in this country. It's been a far, far closer affair than many might have thought, especially given the goals that were shipped last time out two weeks ago. Jace jumps over the challenge, releases United down this right-hand side and then makes the overlapping run as well. Nice first touch and she's clattered into, and that's a painful one. United's free kick. And it's the Bristol City player who's down in discomfort. And I think it's Jamie Lee Napier. It is Jamie Lee Napier. And that means that Bristol City will be reduced to 10 in the final stages. Napier received a yellow card very, very early on in this match. And we mentioned it was a bit of a tightrope for her to have to tread for the rest of the game. And unfortunately for her, a good shift comes to a premature end. No question marks over that. Jace had made the commitment, brought that intensity that again we keep coming back to from a Manchester United perspective. And look what it's led to. It's led to United having the upper hand, not only in scoreline, but in player advantage as well. Can they make the extra body count as Williams looks to chest and get the strike away? But a boot swings out and it goes out for a throw in. Zellum. Headed out for a corner. And that sending off has given, again, the home crowd something to kind of cheer and get behind. Encouraging their players to do the same. Get bodies forward, commit, take advantage. Zellum on the corners. We'll take this one again. Delivery at the back post this time where Turner is taking up residence. Turner's offering a pass on to Garcia. Garcia traveling back, plays it to Letizia. Riviere. Harrison. Intercepts, it's another corner this time. And over on the other side, I was going to say Ella Toon will take, but Katie Zellum jogs over to pick up the ball. A short corner might be on the cards here for United. There's Turner, it's a good header. 
There was a Bristol City player on the line, but the danger was dealt with as well by Yanez. Turner did really well to back peel off of her marker. Might have been better nodding it down towards the inside post rather than the far. United applying pressure, dispossess Bristol City and the shot comes in from Williams. And Garcia, her teammate, saying, why did you not lay it off to me? But that's a striker's instinct, both Toon and Garcia in on goal, perhaps in better positions. The decision making not quite there for Williams. But this is better from United into the final five minutes. Jace picks up the ball and Connolly eventually still under pressure from both United players, needs some support from her teammates. Rogers eventually plays it long. United. Hoping to double their advantage against City, who are down to 10. A player down. Some space is beginning to open up as a result. And United moving the ball around quicker is helping that no end. There is some space over on the right-hand side. Instead, United play down the left. Here comes the switch. Letizia can play Riviera in quickly instead. Goes back centrally to Toon. Williams with her back to goal, lays it off to Toon. Lundell now for United. Williams, challenge from Rogers. Leads to another free kick. Booze ring around. As this slightly more intense period of play from Manchester United will be paused temporarily as Yanez needs some treatment. One of three changes made to the starting 11. Lauren Smith said just before kickoff, just three goalkeepers competing against one another, and today it was Yanez's turn. and She's done really, really well so far this afternoon. Just a few minutes left. Let's run you through what is going on in FA play. It's the final stages of the match between Liverpool and West Ham United as well. Liverpool are 3-0 up against West Ham United. And don't go anywhere because at 2 o'clock, Tottenham Hotspur are kicking off against Leicester City. And you can watch that all unfold here live on FA Player. If you want to switch up your women's Super League football for a bit of championship action, then we've got you covered as well. Southampton host Reading. That match is kicking off in 10 minutes or so. The other game going on in the women's Super League today is that between Brighton and Man City. Manchester City took a 2-0 advantage in the opening 40 minutes and that is still the score now as it approaches an hour being played there. Despite three games taking place at the moment, the table will look pretty much the same. Bristol and West Ham set to end the day with the same amount of points that they started it with, that six point gap. Still in place ahead of another busy weekend next weekend in the WSL. Bristol City have conceded the most amount of goals in this division. Minus 26 is the goal difference. Minus 17 for West Ham. So that almost feels like a, an additional point if you're a Hammers supporter. And the visitors will not want to concede again from this set piece. The ball comes whistling in. And it's whiskers as Garcia makes the connection to it. Inches wide of the target. Zellum, Toon. 
And then we can see Garcia aiming to get the flick towards goal. Good chance late on here. Lisa Evans is being prepared to come on. And that will be in place of Fionn Morgan, who has again had a really, really important shift. We saw the subs board being prepared. And now it does get lifted aloft. And Evans comes on. Bristol City down to 10, 1 0 down. We've played the 90 minutes. We'll await the fourth official's instructions of how much additional time there is to be played here. Eight is what has just rung around Lee Sports Village as Jace is in on goal, gets the shot away. Connolly again applying enough pressure. Connolly. Just using her body well enough there because she was beaten for pace, which is fair enough against Jace in any circumstances, let alone when you've played the full 90 up against the substitute ready and raring to go for the Red Devils. Evans back to Harrison. The substitutes combine and Harrison plays it long all the way to Earps. England's number one. Out to Riviere. Toon and Garcia linking up down the left. Garcia now has room to get the shot away if she chooses. Side foots it. It's cut out by Bristol City. Played back to Yanez, who could have punted it high up the pitch, but lays it off to Evans instead. Good control from Harrison. City looking to play some smart football. Connolly under pressure from Williams, who does really, really well using all of her experience, Williams. But Connolly comes on top of that battle. The Republic of Ireland International battling away on St. Patrick's Day. Jace, kept company by Ward, manages to find Zellum. Another cross into the box, dealt with by Bristol City. Defended crosses really well. They've defended corners really well. And I thought United were going to get the corner there, but the flag rises much to the disgust of the uh, Manchester United supporters here, it will be a goal kick for City. Erps' clearance heads straight for the stands. Time here for an equaliser. Throw taken by Evans. Harrison had three red shirts around her. Turn by Toon to Zellum. Out to Riviere. Jace now sprinting forwards. Held up by Ward. And this time, United will have the corner. Four minutes of the eight played. The 
corner comes in. And there is the second. It's a brace for Lisa Nolson. Her goal after nine minutes and her goal late in injury time seals the three points for Manchester United. The delivery comes in hooked. The first was with her left, the second with her right. An important contribution from the midfielder this afternoon. It means that the final five minutes here for Manchester United can perhaps be a little more relaxed. A two goal cushion. And a chance to attack again, this time Toon playing the ball forwards, looking for Garcia. Sliding tackle from Toon. Connolly plays it out to the right. Over 4,000 here enjoying this game between Manchester United and Bristol City. One that has around 90 seconds left of it. Bookmarked by two Lisa Nolson goals. Will we see another goal this afternoon in the few moments that remain? Jace will take the corner. And United will look to replicate what we saw just moments ago. Delivery comes in. Bobbling around. Nodded back towards goal by Letizia. City driving forwards. Evans trying to pick out a teammate, but Toon is there. and pull from Harrison on Jace and it will warrant a yellow card as well for Harrison making her return from injury she'll be a key player for City ahead of these tough fixtures against those teams in the top six to come they'll be able to take some real constructive points from today despite defeat we have played the allotted eight minutes. This could well be the final piece of action. And there is the yellow card confirmed for you. Abby Harrison in the book for that pull on Jace. And that is the final piece of action of this game. A game bookmarked by an early goal and a late one for Manchester United. A big three points for the hosts. It finishes here at Lee Sports Village. Manchester United 2, Bristol City 0. Let's take a look back at the highlights and the key moments of the match. The first being the opening goal of the game. Lisa Nelson with the finish afforded far too much time to pick her spot and finished accordingly. 
City almost equalised with this opportunity, rattling the post. It was an important moment in the match. United didn't create enough chances with the possession that they had. And a difficult afternoon for Bristol City was made harder when they were reduced to 10. Jamie Lee Napier receiving a second yellow card and United were able to capitalise late on in the game. They had a flurry of corners and set-piece opportunities. Garcia's header was a warning sign until eventually the second goal did come. A right-footed finish this time, late into injury time. Made it two, and it wrapped up three WSL points for the hosts. It finishes here in the Barclays Women's Super League. Manchester United two, Bristol City nil.